Okay, welcome to our Eid of Shabbat Friday class, Parashat Ki Tabo. Moshe Rabbeinu proclaims confidently that this is the first time after 40 years that the nation's eyes have seen. What is he talking about? And what we're talking about is a very interesting passage at the end of Parashat Ki Tabo, after the curses are over. And after Moshe Rabbeinu went through the second set, after Parashat Bechokotai was the first, and Parashat Kitabo, the second set of the predictions of tragedy and oppressions and tragedies and of persecutions and difficulties in the impending exile of the Kurtan Israel over century and millennia. At the end of all that, though, as the of the third section of the book of Devarim, the Berit, the covenant that Hashem um, entered into, Amisra entered into Hashem, Be, uh, Moab, the second covenant, um, and it includes uh, all the predictions and foretellings of reward and punishment. At the end of this, uh, the first phase of that section, which is the future curses, says, These are the words of the covenant. And then it says, in the last group of Pesukim, through the last eight Pesukim of the parasha, Kaftet, chapter 29, Pesuk Aleph, verse 1, Vayikra Moshe Klo Yisrael V'yomer Alehem. Moshe calls the nation, and he tells them. First of all, what does that mean, he called the nation? He was just speaking to the entire nation and telling them, telling them about their possible cursed future. So what is this? And he calls the entire nation. And he tells them as follows. Let's go through a few Pesukim. We'll, we'll get back to that question. He tells them about Tim, Tim, you've seen everything that we've done. Hashem did in Misraim to your eyes, to Paro, all the great wonders, the supernatural miracles. And then he says something which is fascinating. It is really enigmatic, a mysterious pasuk in the middle of this discussion, pasuk gimal. This will be our focus. And until this day, Hashem did not give you a heart or a mind to know, eyes to see, and ears to hear. You were deaf, dumb, and mute until this point. And then he continues. With history, you saw what was done in Israel, and then came the desert. So, 40 years the desert, I sustained and supported you. Your clothing didn't wear out, your, shoe, your shoes didn't become uh, bloated and decayed. Uh, you didn't eat bread and drink wine. And water and and and, and uh, intoxicating liquid. In other words, I sustained you with the man. The man said, so you should know I'm God." And then I brought you to this place. We had military defeats, and I gave you two and a half tribes, all this territory, even before on the east of the Jordan, even before we got to Israel. And you should keep this confidence. So, really, besides the one mysterious pasuk in the middle, the rest of it seems like a real synopsis of uh, the Chumash from the beginning, beginning of Parashat Shemot until now, right? All the events in Yisya Misraim, the exodus from Egypt, followed by the 40 years, miraculous years of survival in the desert, culminating with the military victories against Sihon and Og, and bringing them to on the cusp of entering Eretz Yisrael. And all that seemed like a nice historical synopsis. It's invigorating, it's motivating, inspirational. We just don't understand that pasuk in the middle with the eyes and the, and the mind and the ears. What is he talking about? Let's go back to the first question. So it says he called Moshe, Moshe called of Yisrael, even though he was already addressing them. So the Ona, Ona Hayim explains very simply, they were still on the premises, so to speak. They were still in gathering formation, gathered formation. But this was clearly a new speech that was started. And the truth is, he points out to us, and this is very clear, 
The next parasha, Nisabim, which we read the week before Rosh Hashanah, Tem Nisabim Hayom, um, that lacked the introduction of, and he gathered the people, and he spoke to the people. Just the parasha starts with, you are gathered here today. So really, that speech of Parashat Nisavim that led him to Vayelech, and then eventually Ha'azinu, began here at the end of Parashat Kitavo. So this Vayikra Moshe, and he called them and spoke to them, was the beginning of the speech of Parashat Nisavim. Kadosh Baruch Hu decided that the Parashat starts at Tem Nisavim Hayom. But this is really, in terms of, that the context of Moshe speaking to the people, it really began over here. Ibn Ezra alludes to that as well. So this is really the start of something rather than the end of something, although it's at the end of our parasha. Okay, fine. So what's going on here? He gives them this synopsis from Isiyah Misraim to the 40 years in the Midbar, to the military victories, where in the middle he says, and Hashem did not give you a mind to know, eyes to see and ears to hear until today. What is he referring to? So Rashid really brings a fascinating idea. He, he's quoting someone we don't know. He says, Shamati, I heard from someone. And he speaks about this based on this Midrash, apparently, where um, in the parasha, impending parasha uh, of Vayelech, which is two weeks from now, where he gives Moshe Rabbeinu writes the Torah on Hashem's instruction and gives it to Levi, and there was some claims, complaints in Am Yisrael. You're giving a Torah to Shev Levi while we were Ma'amad Harisi and also we're also recipients of the Torah. And what's going to happen in the future? Complain some people from Am Yisrael apparently is that, you know, people will say in the future that the Torah was only given to Shev Levi and not to us. It's going to be a debacle. Moshe Rabbeinu really saw a lot of logic and intelligence in, in what they were saying. And he says, ah, wow. And now this is, a, this is a real complaint, so to speak. This has vision to it. You guys are coming of age. You're maturing as a nation. Ah, wow, I see you haven't had a, gotten a mind and, and vision and, and proper understanding until today. Okay, Moshe Rashid really is quoting us a source. We're not even sure where it's from, but it's very, it's very interesting. Um, but we feel that there is a bigger picture going on with this message from Moshe Rabbeinu. So the Svorano says, and again, Ibn Ezra mentions this as well, that up till now, in the 40-year sojourn in the desert, we know there were many incidents of rebelliousness and complaints. Many of them we see in the first one plus years, and then some others, because we have 38 years that were almost 38 years we're not told of in the, in the desert. And then towards the end, after the 39th year, we see some of them as well. Um, in between, we're not really sure of, of the events in terms of their rebelliousness, but certainly Hashem said, you tested me 10 times. Mirim, he uh, uh, says, Moshe Rabbeinu said that you were rebellious from the day I knew you until today, right? There were very a lot of unfortunate incidents, not by the entire nation, but many people in the nation. And because of that, says this formula, from your many challenges and confrontations with the Kadosh Paruchu, which really demonstrated a lack of proper emuna. Um, and again, even as that echoes the idea, although he was before Svodno, says it less explicitly, but also because of these tests up till now, you didn't really see it collectively as a nation. You didn't really understand. You didn't really see and hear. Meaning that when you're in a mode of complaint, when you're in a mode of rationalizing your wrongful actions and blaming it and throwing off blame on something else, namely on HaKadosh Baruch Hu. When you're in a mode of trying to justify things that you do and not being intellectually honest with yourselves as a nation, you can't see the truth. Unless you are really trying to confront the truth, you're going to ignore the truth. And therefore, in this past all these past decades, Am Yisrael as a full nation, we're not talking about everyone, but we're talking about as a complete nation. We can't say that this was a nation that was able to see clearly to the will of God, see themselves clearly, and therefore be able 
to embrace Hashem's vision and the objective of them sojourning here in the desert and the destination to Eretz Yisrael and what HaKadosh Baruch Hu wants from them. They never as a nation saw it clearly because their uh, their vision was obfuscated and their and their proper understanding was clouded because they were in a constant state, not constant, but often a state of rationalizing. And that's what those complaints really were. And they were uh, you know, not in, in the proper context and not with deep-rooted faith all the time as a complete nation again. And therefore, Moshe Rabbeinu at this point, apparently, uh, in, the, in the 40 years of the desert, at the end, the last months and the last days, and according to a Midrash Rabbah, actually, this occurred in the last day of Moshe Rabbeinu's life. Which means there was a lot of events. Nisavim Bayelech as you know Zot Beracha, but whether it was a day or a few days, at the very end, Moshe Rabbeinu finally saw, and he's not, he's not, you know, buttering them up. And Moshe Rabbeinu was no stronger than him, a more blunt leader than him. Finally, was able to say that you have filtered all this out of your system. You've gone over this. You've matured as a nation. There's no more air of rebelliousness anymore. There's no more rationalizing. There's honesty. There's absolute quest of the truth completely as a nation. And now I can finally say that you, Am Yisrael, you see the truth. You see, you understand, you, you absorb. You have the mind, eyes, and ears that it takes for a nation now to move forward into the, the promised land and the gift that Kadosh Baruch Hu has to give you of Eretz Yisrael. Now you're ready. It's a profound message, especially during these days of Teshuvah that we have. That as long as we are demonstrating some, some air of rebellion to Hashem, where we do things and we rationalize, we're not completely honest with ourselves, we're not intellectually honest, we're not allowing us to see the truth completely, we're in a state of justifying some things that we do, actions, lifestyle, etc. We will never be able to reach completion. We can't make full teshuvah. We're clouding our own vision. As Moshe Rabbeinu advised them in Parashat Ve'ekev, umaltemet ordat lebabchem. You have to force, circumcise the foreskin of your hearts. You have to remove that layer of rationalization, of dishonesty, and reach a state of intellectual honesty where you are willing to see everything for what it is, namely in the mirror, right to ourselves, and say, ah, I have to admit, I have to see this what it is. I have to really man up that Kadosh Baruch Hu right now. And come to the plate and say the right things and believe. And at that moment, when you're willing to open up to God, is when clarity wins the day and we see the truth. But there is one more, I think even more profound idea that I found in the, in the great uh, master, the Meshech Chochman on Torah. And he says as follows. He says, you know, the miraculous events of the 40 years, they were just that. They lived a supernatural lifestyle and existence. And you have to ask why? It was such an unrealistic way of living. It's not really a model for us because we're never going to be able to live that way. And yet, it was a paradigm for the generations in that we always are able to reflect to the years of the desert and say, look, it's really God who fights wars. Look, HaKadosh Baruch Hu is the true sustainer of man. Look, Hashem provides for us and is always in the background, cradling us and embracing us. That became our model to see the real function and operations of a Kadosh Baruch Hu in this world, and especially vis-a-vis -vis Am Yisrael and every single individual Jew. We look to the desert as a model of Hashem's existence in this world vis-a-vis -vis us. It was beautiful. But because it was miraculous, Am Yisrael never really had to have a clear, intellectual, honest vision because they were riding the wave of miracles. There was really nothing to see in terms of the truth challenges of life. They they really, Am Yisrael, because of 
the miraculous existence, uh, never really had to be so honest with themselves, so to speak, and with life because they lived in that real life. And says Moshe Rabbeinu, we came to a close, this existence, eventually the man stopped falling, the be'ed was already closed, and this miraculous supernatural lifestyle coming to an end says now, now and only now, Am Yisrael, Hashem gave you the vision to see, the eyes, the vision to uh, the vision to see, the mind to understand, the ears to hear, only today. Now you're regular citizens. Now you no longer live a supernatural existence. Now, Am Yisrael, now you're real people. Amazing. And because of that, they now have the ability to reflect back. And to look at this 40 years of miracles and see what and see them for what they were. Because when you're living something so fortunate, it's very hard to acknowledge and appreciate what you're living until you can remove yourself, extricate yourself from the situation, reflect back and say, Wow, Hashem really did it for me. I very I in, uh, recently saw a story or heard a, a wonderful analogy where there was a woman whose, whose husband was put in prison in the Soviet Union. And uh, she had a very difficult time keeping the business and the, uh, and and uh, and cultivating the land. And, and she wrote him a letter once that he was in prison. One winter, she said, she said, the ground's too hard. I can't plant. I don't know how can buy. And he wrote her back. He said, um, don't dig up land too much because you'll find all of the weapons that were buried underneath. Knowing, of course, that the KGB filters all of those letters. A few days later, she had all these officers at the, at the, at the, at the, on the property ripping up the land and 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 and, and completely tearing everything apart. And she was so afraid. And finally, she wrote him back. She says, "This is what happened." And he wrote her back. Says, right now, you can plant. And anyone who was on the scene at the time would say, because Hazita, this woman, she's being ransacked. The property's being ruined and destroyed. But someone who had clear vision would actually say. All they're doing is plowing for her, plowing their land. When you can be out of a situation and be objective and see clearly, you can really recognize the, the workings of HaKadosh Baruch the true workings. And it was just this moment, at the end of Moshe Rabbeinu's life, that he was able to proclaim to Am Yisrael, now you can objectively reflect on what I've done for you these 40 years in the desert. Now you're a people, a people with understanding and vision. Now, I'm Yisrael, you are ready collectively as a nation. I feel confident you're mature and you're right. Now you can go into Israel. I'm proud of you. Be the nation that you can be because Hashem has equipped you with everything you needed at the end of your sojourn in the desert, at the end of my life. Allah and good luck and Eris Yisrael. Amen, Amen, Shabbat.